So in this video, we're going to cover how to use a PIR sensor uh, to control a servo motor. So you could um, simulate this as kind of like a uh, an automatic uh, door opener, kind of like when you go to a store and then you walk towards the door and it opens automatically. So the idea here is um, once this senses motion, this uh, servo will go to a specific position and then once it stops sensing motion it goes back to its original position um, this uh, is a really small servo so it's not very practical to use this to actually open and close the door but the uh, the concepts would be the same so I'm going to press start simulation here and um, my circuit here in my program uh, behaves this way so when I uh, click on this here and I simulate someone uh, moving in front of the sensor, the servo goes to the position 180. And then when it stops sensing motion, it goes back to position zero. Remember the range of a servo motor is zero to 180. Uh, and so this will be our output. Our input will be this PIR sensor, which if it detects motion, it would be high or one. And if it doesn't sense motion, it would be a low or zero. So it would be digitally reading. Remember, digital is high or low or one or zero. So before we get started, um, go ahead, pause this video and start a new um, circuit. Um, Make sure you're in circuits in your dashboard, then create a new circuit, title it, um, and then uh, replicate what you see here. And then when you come back, we'll move on to how to code this. So at this point, you should have your circuit built and it should look very similar to mine. Um, before we get started here, just make sure that your ground and your positive, your voltage are connected to your breadboard and uh, your PIR sensor has uh, power as ground and it's connected to pin 4 and your servo motor should have something similar in that it should have a ground it should have a uh, voltage or positive and then it should also have a signal and uh, this signal again needs to be connected to uh, any of the pins that have a wave in front of it so 11 does so that's okay um, and the reason why is because when we try to control a component um, using something other than high or low, um, such as a number between a range, we may have to make sure that it's plugged into a uh, an analog um, pin. So we'll click on code here, and we're going to start by um, creating a variable, and I'll click on create variable, and I'm going to call this uh, PIR state. So this will be the state of our um, PIR motion sensor and I'm going to set it equal to um, so again this variable which is just a box is going to be equal to the state of this and so I'm going to go to input and the state is going to be read digital and then the pin is connected to 4 so when this senses motion, it's going to send a 1 and set it equal to uh, to be in PIR state. So PIR state would equal to 1. And if it doesn't sense motion, PIR state is equal to 0. And the next thing we have to do is go to control, uh, use an if-then-else block, then go to math, drag in one of these here. This is called a condition, and a condition can either be true or false. And the condition is going to say that if the PIR state, so we'll go to variables, is equal to 1, indicating that there is movement, we want to set our servo motor to go to 180. So we'll go to output, and then we're going to use the fourth block down. And we're going to say rotate servo on pin, and then the location where our servo is connected to, which is 11. And we're going to set it to... 180 degrees the max range and then otherwise else right which is what should happen when the pin state is not one meaning there is no motion when there is no motion we set the servo pin 11 to go to zero so I'll click on code here to nest all that I'll push this down and I'll click on start simulation 
and then I'll click on my motion sensor and simulate someone passing it and it once it senses motion it opens my door or moves my servo to position 180 and then once there is no more movement it goes back to position zero.